Number 26, an eight hour exposure to a sound intensity level of 90 decibels may cause hearing damage. What energy in joules falls on a 0.8 centimeter diameter eardrum so exposed? All right, so I have a little picture over here. Uh, I tried to show it the best I could. This is circular, but I was trying to show a side view, but you know my artistic ability at this point. Um, but just, you know, th this should be circular. And uh, they tell us that the diameter is going to be 8 centimeters. Now, already right off the bat, I know, you know, we're probably going to need this in meters. So let's just convert that into meters. So it'd be 0 0.800 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. And that's the diameter. And you know most likely we don't need diameter, right? We need radius. So simply divide that by 2. So point. Uh, 400 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. That would be the radius. Okay. And then we have this particular sound intensity level bearing down on this eardrum uh, for a total of 8 hours. <clears throat> and we somehow have to find the energy. Okay. So a lot of difficulty in physics is like, okay, great. I'm given this information and I have no idea how this stuff is related to one another. So it's a valid point. And through a lot of practice and through a lot of thinking, right, um, we start to begin to identify some patterns. Now it's hard work, uh, but the first thing I would do in a problem like this is start kind of labeling out maybe either variables or units, and then I try to use my formulas to try and make a connection, okay? So I know I'm dealing, so firstly, I know I'm dealing with a radius, basically. I know they gave me a diameter. Now maybe that's important, maybe it's not. But I know they gave us a radius. Now, why would they give us a radius of an object, right, or of a circle? Why? Well, think back. When you had to know the diameter of the radius, what did you calculate about that object? Most likely, you calculated surface area, right? Most likely. Could have been volume, too, right? But, you know, which would have been valid. But, mm, you know, we haven't seen volume in a little while now, and I don't think volume would kind of... doesn't sound like it would be appropriate here. So, more than likely it's going to be area. So they're kind of telling me an area here, all right? Or I could find area, all right? The next thing is I start looking at, they gave me sound intensity level. Okay, so they gave me a beta value, right? Beta. Okay. So then I'm thinking, all right, um, you know, then I start asking myself, all right, about the question, what energy in joules? And I start thinking, I'm like, Ener well, energy is in energy... Right, I mean, they told us in joules, okay? But energy is, how is energy related to this stuff? That's the key, okay? Now, energy is related. Energy is in one of these formulas over here on the right-hand side. It's in, it's in one of them, okay? And you might say, well, I'm looking through and I don't see energy. I don't see any. Well, it's in another unit, right? Consider the formula sound intensity is equal to capital P all over A. In other words, intensity of a sound is equal to the power of that sound divided by the area over which that power is being applied. What are the units of power? Well, units of power are watts. Okay. What's a watt? It's a joule per second, right? You can also think back to power formulas. You know that from back in the day, power is equal to energy over time. <gasps> There it is, right? There it is. There's the energy. So now I realize, right? And, and this is, this is, I'm thinking through formulas, right? Now I realize that really energy is hidden in this power value. And now I, oh my goodness, wait a minute. And that's also related to area. And they gave me an area. I'm probably on the right track now, right? And now if, if energy is hidden in the power, and I know the area. Well, to figure out then the power here, right, I would have to know the intensity. And then you start thinking, did they give me the intensity? No, they didn't. But what relates to intensity? Right, I've done 15 problems now like this where I was relating sound intensity level to just intensity. That's where the practice comes in, right? If you don't practice enough problems, you won't be able to make those connections, all right? And I kid you not, I did, when I was a student, I did every problem. In the, I mean, I'm doing every problem in the textbook, right? I did it as a student too. All right. I did every problem in the book. And part of me was always like, oh man, you know, when, when I had the solution manual, they would only solve like every other problem. Some of the problems I needed help on, the professor didn't want to help or whatever the case is, I had no real resource. So hence why we're doing what we're doing. But in any case, um, that's kind of how I begin to think. 
all right? That's how I start to think through a problem like this. I use formulas, I use units, and I try to connect the pieces together. If you notice, sometimes it's not a nice linear process where, okay, let's do part step one, let's do then step two, let's then do step three, because it's so hard to s systematize like that. I don't is that even a word? I'm not even sure, but that's why I tutor science and not English. Anyway, um, so here what we're going to now do is we, we already know that we have to make a conversion from the sound intensity level on into uh, intensity, okay? So why don't we start using that formula? Beta is equal to 10 times the log base 10 of the, sound, of the intensity divided by the threshold of hearing, which is 10 to the minus 12. I want to convert my decibel value into intensity. So I'm going to plug in the 90. That's going to be equal to 10 multiplied by the log base 10. Of Now you've seen this calculation 15 times, right? Because you've been either doing the problems or if you've had trouble, you've been watching the videos. So now this is divide 10 on both sides. So this is 9 is equal to the log base 10 of i over 10 to the minus 12th. And now I need to take the base, I need to uh, base 10 both sides basically, right? So we're going to take base 10. So I'm going to do the work over here now. And I'm going to raise each side, right? The, the These become the exponents basically. So this is log base 10 of i over 10 to the, well, it's getting messy, of 10 to the minus 12th. And now what we realize is that we are going to cancel the base 10 and the log. That's the whole point. So this becomes now 10 raised to the 9 is equal to then i over 10 to the minus 12th. And I can do a cross multiplication. So I realize that the intensity level, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I used the wrong word there. Not the intensity level, the intensity, because intensity level technically is decibel. So the intensity here is going to be 10 raised. And all you got to do is add these exponents together. And that's going to be a minus 3. And that's in units of what? Watts per meter squared, power per area. And that's, and, and now you can see, right? Oh, there's the formula, right? Power per area. So now, okay. So I have the intensity. So now what I can do is I can now plug into my formula over here. Intensity is equal to power over area. Because I realize, oh, right, I have the area, right? So I can find the power. So let's just do that next, okay? So let's just move this on over a little bit. And let me just erase some of this stuff over here. Let's make it a little nice. All right, so now I'm gonna do uh, power, excuse me, intensity is equal to power over area. My intensity now is 10 to the minus three. Okay, that's going to be equal to the power over the area over which that power is applied. And it's being supplied or bearing down on or falls on or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, the area is going to be pi, it's a circle, so it's pi r squared, and that's why we found the radius, right, 0.4, because we know we've seen patterns like this now throughout the entire book, so 10 to the uh, minus 2, and don't forget to square that. So now let's multiply this on out, so let's find the power. So power, whoops, power is equal to, doo -doo -doo, 10 to the, <laughs> it's kind of how I feel my brain works sometimes, doo -doo -doo. All right, so 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by pi times then 0.4 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. And here we get a value of approximately now uh, 5.03, 5.03 times 10 to the minus 8. All right. And now that is going to be in terms of uh, power, which is watts, okay, which is also known, you can write watts or you can write joules per second. I'm going to write joules per second because it makes it a little more, a little clearer. Now, we have the power. It's not the answer. But now we have to convert it into energy. So you know, as we said before, you know we have the formula here, power is equal to energy per time. Specifically, energy is in joules. What's time? Seconds, right? And what did they give us? Not seconds. They gave us hours. So what do you got to do first? I'm going to convert that into seconds. All right, so eight hours. Eight hours. In uh, every hour, right, there is going to, in every hour, there's going to be 60 minutes. In every minute, there's going to be 60 seconds. So just simply multiply that by 3,600, basically. So eight times 60 times 60, I'm going to get a value of 28,800. Okay? 
So 28,000, let me just move this A out of the way. This, oh, what, what? What happened there? Okay. So this is 28,800, 28,800 seconds. Great, now I can find what I need to find, right? So the power I found, remember I'm gonna use exact values here. Power is gonna be 5.03 times 10 to the minus eight is equal to then the energy over the time which that power was supplied and that is going to be uh, 28,800. And energy will now be equal to simply cross multiply. So we're gonna take that exact value. And it works out to be about 1.45-ish 1. 1. Uh, times 10 raised to the one, two, three, minus three. And that is in joules, all right? And that is the final answer. Now I could have also done this with a whole bunch of substitutions and formulas, it would have gotten a little messy. So in this case, I decided to break it down, show each piece, but then try to use the exact numbers in my calculations. Anyway, guys, I, I do hope this helps, okay? Um, you know, part of the, when you're taking any particular science course or really just any anything, you know, you really wanna try to uh, identify, you really wanna try to figure out problem solving strategies, right? You want to try to find a way to figure out the problem all right um and hopefully and that's where like i mentioned before a lot of practice comes in the more problems you see the more you're challenging yourself to think maybe outside the box you know do other grab another textbook right Gra do problems from that textbook too all right just do as many problems as you can i guarantee there is no secret the secret is just hard work <laughs> there is no secret the secret is hard work and a ton of practice all right and then getting help when you need help all right or finding a resource uh when you need help just like i did when i was a student tried to do the best i could although the options were limited but you know you work with what you have guys thank you very much for tuning in appreciate it please remember to subscribe help us out tell your friends too we got a whole bunch of other videos out there too and uh hit the like button if you can you know just a simple click and subscribe click and uh i'm out